Welcome to Manifest, hosted by international evangelist, teacher, and author Perry Stone. Enjoy unique insight into prophetic and practical truth. It's time to feast on fresh manna, so get ready to be blessed and encouraged. And now, here is your host and teacher, Perry Stone. I'm coming to you from the Sea of Galilee here in Israel at a great restaurant where we just ate a meal. And everybody is just like about to fall out in the ground sleeping because they're so full. See, look at them. They're already they're here on the ground already. And it's as hot as purgatory for you Catholic folks that are here. Isn't it? I mean, this is like this feels like July weather, and it's just beautiful outside. It's fabulous outside. Got a great teaching today, but let's give the Lord a hand because this is the day the Lord has made. And it's beautiful. It is beautiful. We give God the glory. The weather is great. God is good. I'm going, to, I'm going to minister a word of something that happened around this lake, and I call it the prophetic code hidden in the mystery of the barley loaves and fish, the feeding of the multitude. And let's read that together. Let's just get started because I have a lot of territory to cover in the next little bit. Um, Jesus starts asking the disciples, do we have bread or food to feed the multitude that's been with me for quite some time while I'm preaching? And Andrew uh, and Philip, of course, Philip came and said, 200 pennies worth of bread is not sufficient for them, let it, uh, that every one of them may take even a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, there is a lad here which has five barley loaves, two small fish, but what are they among many? Now, you know the story. Jesus made him sit down in the grass, and then the Bible says he took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples, the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise the fishes as much as they would. When they were filled, he said to his disciples, this is very insignificant, gather up the fragments that nothing be lost. They gathered them together and filled 12 baskets. Now, I want you to notice the numbers here. The numbers here are 12 baskets full left over. Then you have, uh, according to the scripture here, you have a, a lad that has five barley loaves and two small fish. Now, when you study the Bible and you just read the story, most theologians will go and they will do a Greek word study or they will do a Hebrew word study and they'll try to tell you what the text is saying itself. Seldom do they ever ask questions like, why was it two instead of ten? Why was it five instead of twelve? Why, why, why not eighteen baskets? Why not five? Here's what I believe. In fact, let me just do this from a little bit of a rabbinical perspective. From a rabbinical way of studying scripture, the rabbis teach that there's four methods of interpreting the Bible. The first is called Peshat, then Remez, then Drush, and then Sod. And here's what they mean. Peshat is the plain or literal meaning of the scripture. That's the basic. You read the Bible, you get the meaning of what it's saying, the story. The second level is remez, which is the allegorical method, or it hints to certain things with allegories. Drush is the metaphorical meaning, comparison, illustrative. It's where you compare a word with the word, and you say, oh, wait a minute, these two verses go together, or these words match. The fourth level is called, it's spelled in English, S-O-D-E, but it's actually the word sod, and it is the word for mystery. Now, in the, in, in the Jewish tradition, there are levels of studying the Bible. You can pick it up and read it for pleasure and get the story out of it. Or you can sometimes, like Paul did with Hagar and Sarah, he made an allegory out of it, etc. In this story, what happens is there is a sword or a mystery mentioned if we look at this very carefully. First of all, let me share this with you to where you'll understand it. There are, uh, there are things in the Bible that you have to go beyond the surface to understand the hidden meaning. Here's an example. Why did God say put purple, blue, red, and white in the tabernacle? Because purple is always a sign of royalty. White is always a sign of purity. Red is always a sign of redemption. So the colors meant something. Why are numbers important? Do you know that in the Bible, every time you see the number three, it's unity. Every time you see the number four, it's a world of number. Every time you see the number five, it's grace. Every time you see the number six, it's man. Every time you see the number seven, it's completion or perfection. Every time you see the number eight, it's a new beginning. It's that way in all the 66 books. It will never alter, not one time. So numbers have meanings. Symbols have meanings. When Jesus said, I'm going to make you fishers of men, the fish are not the fish in this lake. The fish are the souls that you catch in the net. I hope to bring that out today if we have time. You have even the Feast of Israel that were centered on new moons. You had Sabbaths, you had Jubilee cycles, you had high holy days. 
And so in this feeding of the multitude, I ask myself the question, why is it that in this passage that it tells us that there are two fish, five barley loaves, 12 baskets left over? All right, let me give you the six points I want everyone here to know. If you're taking notes, you want to write this down. There are six points I need you to know about this story in John chapter 6. Point number one is it's near the sea, chapter 6, verse 1. Number two, it's near Passover, near the time of Passover, chapter 6, verse 4. Number three, there are five barley loaves and two fish, chapter 6, verse 9. There are 5,000 men, chapter 6, verse 10. Now, the men were counted not with the women and children, so there's actually not 5,000 people, there's 5,000 men. They gathered the fragments in chapter 6 and verse 12. When they gathered the fragments, 12 baskets are left over, chapter 6, verse 13. Now, here's the story. There is a lad here who has five barley loaves and two small fish, but what are they among so many? In 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 22, Elisha received 20 barley loaves and fed 100 sons of the prophets with some left over. So here Christ is taking two fish, five barley loaves, feeding 5,000 with 12 baskets left over. So what is the prophetic implications of all this? All right. First thing I want to do is I want to look at the number two in the scripture and show you this. On the Feast of Pentecost, the priests were to took two loaves of bread and he waved them before the Lord. Those two loaves of bread we now know represented the Spirit of God being poured out among the Jew and the Gentile. Then we find in Romans chapter 11, two olive trees. The natural tree, which is Israel, the wild olive tree that grows in the Galilee, which represents the Gentiles, and how when these two are grafted together, they become one new man in Christ. We discover you have uh, Peter and Paul, two great apostles. Paul was an apostle to the Gentiles, and Peter was an apostle to the Jewish believers. So you had two apostles, one ministering to Gentiles, one ministering to Jews. Then you have two witnesses. In the book of Revelation, at the tribulation period, you're going to have two witnesses that's going to be here. One is believed to be Elijah, and many people believe the other is going to be Enoch. Now think about this for a moment. E Enoch in came into existence as the seventh man from Adam before there was ever a Jewish people. He, was, he would be classified the Gentile, but Elijah would be classified the Jew. So you have the Jew, and then you have the Gentile. Now, I don't know if you caught what I just said in all this. In every instance, the number two, Pentecost, Romans 11, Peter and Paul, two witnesses, it's Jew and Gentile. Now, what do the two fishes represent? Oh, you're going to love this. In the constellations of heaven, and we did a teaching years ago called Prophecy in the Heavens, in which we did a biblical teaching showing that the 12 constellations go all the way back to the understanding of Adam. Adam told Seth, Seth told Enoch. And when, jo when Joseph in the Old Testament had a dream of the sun, moon, and stars bowing, it wasn't all the stars in heaven. Every son of, ja of, of, of Jacob had a particular emblem of the heaven that they were familiar with. For example, Judah is a lion, and there's a lion emblem in heaven, right? Now, having said that, this is significant. There is an emblem in heaven called Pisces. Now, this is not astrology. This is Christian astronomy. There's a vast difference. Astrology, people worship the stars and think your life, your life is guided by the stars, and that's wrong. It's not biblical. It's forbidden by God. However, Satan didn't make the heavens and the earth and the sun, moon, and stars. And God said they're for signs and seasons. Now, we're looking at the sign from the biblical perspective. In ancient time, all the way back in the time of, of, of the Exodus, the Egyptians knew that Pisces represented the Hebrew people. Now, if you want to know what it is, check, you ready for this? If you've never heard this, it's two fish connected by a ribbon. Let me say it again. Two fish connected by a ribbon. One is looking upward and one is looking outward. It literally represented the nation of Israel in the Old Testament time. As a matter of fact, let me share some, with you a little bit of history. In ancient time, it was a picture of Judea, and there were two tribes in the land. Here we go again with the number two. There was Benjamin, and there was, the, there was uh, Judah. So those two tribes made up Judea, and there were two. And then it also represented the two months of Adar, which every uh, so many years on the Jewish calendar, they add an extra month uh, so the calendar doesn't get off. So instead of 12 months, you have 13. It's called Adar the second. And so here's the point. Those two fish represent, one is the Jewish branch, one is the Gentile branch, woven together by a ribbon, woven together by a thread. So, oh, watch out here now. So, listen carefully, the two fish would represent him feeding the Jew and the Gentile. Because every time you see this two in the Bible mentioned, 
in the, in, in the examples we gave you, it's going to tie into the Jew and the Gentile. Now we come to five barley loaves. Now here's what's significant about it being barley and not wheat. The fact that this was barley means that it came out of the, out of the Passover harvest. Barley is the first fruit in Israel of the grains that ripens in the early springtime, usually around uh, the month of March or April. Barley, if you know anything about it, it, in, it, it oh, wow, this is going to get deep. You had Passover, unleavened bread, and first fruits. During Passover, you have seven days of unleavened bread, which is linked to the barley harvest. However, at Pentecost, when you count the Feast of Weeks, seven weeks times seven, 49 uh, days, and you come to Pentecost, something happens because when the priest waved those two loaves, it had leaven in it. Now, it's odd that during the spring feast, there's no leaven at the barley harvest, but there's leaven during the wheat harvest. So the fact that this was barley represents the church because the church is to have no leaven because leaven represents sin. Are you listening to me? So Passover is salvation through the blood, but the blood cleanses us from our sin. And then you have a celebration of seven days in which you have no uh, leaven put in your bread. So the fact that this was barley indicates it, ha it was connected after a little bit after the Passover season. All right, now let's go back to these five barley loaves that this young man has. Think about this for a minute. The Bible teaches us that the Word of God is heavenly bread. And the very foundation of all teaching, whether we talk about the Old or New Testament, is the Torah. Somebody tell me how many books were in the Torah. Five. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. There's a total of five books in the Torah. Now, this is interesting, but if you, if you come on down and start look, digging a little bit more, 13 times Jesus mentions bread come down from heaven, and he also compares the bread come down from heaven being himself, the eternal bread, then he compares it to the bread that the children of Israel ate in the wilderness. Are you listening? That was the manna, which was the bread come down from heaven. Oh, by the way, wait a minute. Why does Jesus talk about bread 13 times? Because there were 13 tribes. You say, no, there was only 12. No, Joseph became Ephraim and Manasseh, and then you had Levi. So if you put all of them together, there's a total of 13. There's only 12 if you have Joseph. But when Joseph becomes two tribes, you have to add an extra one. Are you listening? Jesus said, he's the bread. He mentions bread 13 times because there's a total of 13 tribes indicating that God is going to spiritually feed every tribe that he has. Oh, come on. Somebody will get this in just a minute. Now, the five loaves are also interesting because the five loaves fed the entire multitude. Now, if we come from the Torah, the five books of Moses, we come to the book of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. We discover there's a five-fold ministry operating in the church. You have the pastor, you have the evangelist, the teacher, the apostle, and the prophet. And the Bible says they are for the perfecting of the saints. So here we again, we see the number five. Now, in biblical numbers, five represents the number of grace. You remember that David went to the brook and he took five smooth stones from the brook. Now, most of you already know this, but if you don't, it's interesting. When David killed Goliath, all the movies they make of David killing Goliath, the poor little fellow slinging that rock, and he misses. Then he grabs a second rock, and he misses. No, let me tell you something. He didn't miss the first time. He hit him the first time, decked him the first time. And for years, I, I, when I was a kid preacher, I'd say to myself, how come he took five stones? Well, I knew five was the number of grace, but if you'll go and read the Bible, and it's in your Bible, Goliath is the first of first giant. Then in David's day, you had Lami, who was Goliath's brother. You can read this in 2 Samuel and also in Chronicles. You had Lami, who was Goliath's brother. Then you had a giant named Saph. You had a giant named Ishbibinoth. You had a giant from Gath who had six fingers on each hand and six toes on each feet. And here's what it means. That David goes down to that brook. Now, he's a teenager at the time. I love this. And he goes down to that brook, and he knows he's going to kill Goliath, but if he kills the big boss, he may have to take on the other four relatives. Come on, somebody. So he says, I'm going to be prepared. And he didn't take ten rocks because he wasn't afraid of, of missing because he knew the Lord is with me. There's a Jewish tradition that says that when David approached Goliath, and this, these are things that are handed down for hundreds of years, generation, you know, father to son, father to son, that David saw Goliath and said, Who can stand before a man of this, of this size? Then he heard Goliath cursing the God of Israel. 
and he said, I can destroy him because he's blasphemed my God. This is the reason why David took stones and killed the giant because in the law, when you blaspheme God, you had to be stoned. See? And that's why he knew, just give me one rock is all it's going to take to take that giant down. Now, let me go back for a moment and just tell, tell you that I believe that the five loaves represent the Torah, which is the basis of all teaching, and the five loaves are also the fivefold ministry that Christ knew would come in the church because what does the fivefold ministry do? It brings the bread of life to people, whether it's a pastor that's a shepherd, an evangelist that proclaims, whether it's a teacher that's instructing, a prophetic person that gives you the prophetic uh, word of God in the now season, or someone that's an apostle, which means a sent one, that, that moves into nations and starts churches and things of that nature. That is what? Now let's go back. The two loaves, the Jew and the Gentile, the five, uh, I'm sorry, the two fish, the Jew and the Gentile, the five barley loaves, the fivefold ministry. So now we can see the indication. Now then we come to this idea of, of when you look at it, he has 12 basket loads left over. There's the number 12. Well, you had 12 sons of Jacob in the Old Covenant. You have the 12 apostles of the Lamb in the New. And you discover there's 24 elders in heaven. 12 of them are from the Old Covenant, which are the sons of Jacob. 12 are, are the apostles to the Lamb, the 12 apostles. The reason I know that is on the gates and walls of the city of New Jerusalem, You've got the names of the apostles and the names of the 12 sons of Jacob. Now, that's how you know who the 24 elders are. So, we have all that there. Now, here's where it gets a little bit, little bit interesting if you've never heard this. Um, Simon Peter is told to, right out here on this lake, he is told to throw out his net and catch fish. So, he does it. Simon Peter climbed aboard and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153 but even so many, so many that the net was not torn. Now, if you'll remember, the first time Jesus ever told him to go fishing, he broke the net. You remember that? He said, we've toiled all night and caught nothing, but at thy word, and the Greek word there is rhema, meaning at the quickened word you've said, I will go. Now, the, the, if you'll notice, these guys don't fish during the day because the fish, it's hot out. They sink deep. They fish at night. And so Peter had already fished all night and caught nothing. So to him, he knew, well, Jesus is telling me to go fishing. I know there's nothing out there. They're all in the middle of the lake. And I'm not, I don't have to get in my boat and go, but nevertheless, at thy word. He goes out a few feet, throws the net down, and catches so many fish that the nets break. Now, there's two points to make here. Point number one is the reason he got so convicted, because that doesn't happen in the natural. You're not supposed to be able to catch that many fish in the daytime. And he knew this is supernatural. The second thing is the number of fish he caught to make his nets break after he toiled all night and caught nothing. The third thing is he had to beckon to other ships to come in and take the catch. Now, you know, it's interesting because you've got to pay attention to what Jesus tells you. If you go to Luke's Gospel, Jesus said, let down thy nets, N-E-T-S. Does anybody here know that nets is plural and it means more than one? You know what Peter comes along and says, I will let down my net. Oh, that's real faith. Jesus says, get nets, he gets a net. Guess what he had to end up getting? Nets. So when Jesus tells you you're about to get a back-breaking, nets catch catching blessing, come on. Leave the net at home and go get some uh, nets. And then it said he called for other ships. You know we have fellowship that we need among the body of Christ. There's, there's a lot of ships that we need. Fellowship is one of them. So you've got to call the other ships in. Now let me see if I can get to this. So... They caught 153 fish. Now, I've taught this before on the Manifest program. Let me get, uh, get this to you. Why was there 153 fish counted? Because there's a parable of the kingdom that says, The kingdom of heaven is likened to a net cast into the sea and gathered every kind. When it was full, they drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good into vessels. But some, uh, they cast away, the bad they cast away, so will it be at the end of the world. Now, if they catch a catfish here, it's not kosher. They're going to throw it away. That's what it means. They, catch, they took the bad fish and threw it away. It's a non-kosher fish because there's catfish here. Does that make sense? Okay. Makes sense now, don't it? So will it be at the end of the world or the end of the age, the angels will come forth and sever the wicked from among the just. Now, in the parable, the net's the kingdom. He tells Peter to go get a net. The sea or the lake represents the world in the parable, and the, the fish are the nations. Now, I, I think this is so neat. Uh, uh, based on what Jerome, St. Jerome said on a commentary of Ezekiel 47, he said that there was 153 spe spe species of fish, 
And Augustine took the St. Augustine took these numbers 153 and said 100 alludes to the fullness of the Gentiles, 50 alludes to the fullness of Israel's cycle of rest, 3 alludes to the fullness of the Trinity or 153. But I did a little study and found out something. In World War I, there was less than 100 nations around the world. When World War II ended, Germany was divided. There was a lot of division among Europe and the nations. And there was uh, uh, over, uh, uh, over 100 nations in the earth, uh, way over 100 nations. About 30, 25 or 30 years ago, the UN put a stamp out. And Robert saw it. Robert showed it to me where there was 153 recognized nations on earth. Uh, you didn't hear what I just said. Now, there's over now, but remember, the ten kings are going to form a unit. There's going to be kings of the east that's going to form a unit. They're even talking about Canada, America, and Mexico forming a unit. So when the units are all formed at the end of days, this is what I believe, there's 153 nations when the Lord comes back. Now think about it. We're not working on the 153. We're already over 153. So I think that the Bible has the literal meaning, the plain sense, and then anyone who studies heavy scripture knows that God puts numbers, colors, uh, symbols in the Bible for the people to study the deeper things of God to get those particular meanings out. Let me see. I've got 30 seconds left. Jesus fed people on three occasions. Mark chapter 6, five loaves, two fish, 5,000 men. Matthew 15, seven loaves, 4,000 men. John 21. Uh, there, there was uh, 153 fish with 12 disciples. And I'd just like to tell you that those three things represent the three last day revivals that's going to break out in the time of the end. Yes, it does. And I wish I had time to tell you that. Maybe we'll do it on another telecast.